Good morning, Eleanor. You look mischievous right now. What are you doing? Good morning. <laughs> hmm. My little girl. <laughs> and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Stephen. It is 1248, and I'm kind of running a little bit late. I'm meeting with my uh, cousin Heidi, and I think Linda. Uh, we're going to be meeting at uh, Olive Garden. If you don't remember videos, gosh, maybe a week or two back, I was driving by a, uh, an Olive Garden thinking, oh my God, all I want is to sit down and gorge on like Alfredo or something. I was just craving Olive Garden. And recently Heidi said, hey, I miss your face. Let's go to lunch. Uh, and you know, where do you want to go? And I'm like, I really don't know many restaurants here in, in Vegas. Let's go to like, yeah, I've been craving Olive Garden. So let's do it. She knows I'm trying to eat sensibly. Uh, today I might cheat. I don't know. It's it's Olive Garden. What can I do that's like sensible? So I might just have a regular meal. I don't know. I'm, I am craving Alfredo. Uh, but I'm hoping Linda's there as well. <clears throat> we're, we're supposed to meet at 1 o'clock. It's probably a 15 minute drive. So I'm probably going to be a couple minutes late. Uh, but I could not decide on what to wear this morning. Uh, over the past year or so, I have really been... Um, buying a lot of clothes and shoes and kind of resuscitating my wardrobe for my first seven years here in Las Vegas, I really didn't dress. Now, I used to dress. I used to really think about what I wore every day. Uh, I worked at Neiman Marcus and Saks and I had to look good. I would walk into an AA meeting and people would be like, whoa, <laughs> what's, go what's going on? What kind of meeting is this? You know? Um, but, uh, so I've, I've come back to enjoying clothes once again, now that I fit in them. But now my problem is most of my shirts are too big. They're like billowy on me, which is a nice problem to have. Uh, this shirt I'm wearing right now is a little Ralph Lauren polo number under a, I don't know who makes this sweater, but I thought it was very spring-like and it feels very spring-like here in Las Vegas. So I'm wearing a pair of um, navy linen shorts and I've got a pair of uh, really cute uh, British British tan sort of leather uh, woven loafers with little tassels on them. Very preppy. And I'm carrying my, does anyone remember this bag? My Dooney and Burke that it goes so well with my outfit today. And I am gonna be doing a little thrifting, so I need a bag to carry my things, right? So that is my outfit for the day. I'm feeling very cute. Um, I am feeling very refreshed. I had a beautiful night's sleep with the cats. This morning, Eleanor, who does not like to cuddle as much as Buddy does, Eleanor crawled up, walked up my side, she plopped herself down next to me, which is not uncommon, but she curled up into where my, my uh, armpit, and she put her hands and arms across my shoulder, my uh, tricep here, and um, she cuddled in and went to sleep. Oh, oh my God. It's also part of why I'm late, because I couldn't get out of bed. Uh, but yeah, it's a really beautiful morning. Uh, today is the 17th of March. I believe it's uh, St. Patrick's Day. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day if you celebrate. Uh, but most importantly, yesterday, uh, an anniversary for me, is uh, it was my grandmother's birthday. Now, uh, Gemma, my, my angel, she rescued me. When I was 14, there's always a story. Uh, when I was 14, I left my mother. I ran away from home. We were living in Germany in Stuttgart uh, with her third or second or third oh second and third husband uh, uh and um it was it was horrible it was horrible she was she was really really uh hitting bottom and she stayed there for decades uh with her drugs and alcoholism and and physical and mental abuse and and um at 14 i made the decision to run away from my mother um i convinced my aunt elaine if you've not heard this story before I convinced my Aunt Elaine, who was getting married that um, June, August, 
uh, she was getting married August, August 3rd. Uh, and uh, I convinced her to uh, let me be in the wedding as an usher. And um, the usher's gift was a um, pewter beer mug with a glass bottom. I'll always remember that. She gave a pewter beer mug to a 14 year old, which actually was quite fitting because I was already becoming an alcoholic. But um, so I packed my bag with whatever I thought was important enough to take with me from Germany uh, back to Rhode Island. And um, I say goodbye to my mother. Bye. And I never went back. I just stayed with my grandmother. I uh, didn't ask her permission. I just assumed she'd let me and she did. She loved me. Um, but, um, yeah, my grandmother, it was her birthday yesterday. Uh, she, we would celebrate our birthdays together, uh, it's sort of, because it, it's the same week. Uh, we would sit down and, um, really enjoy things that we loved that no one else did. We would sit down and eat an entire bag of black jelly beans. We both adored black jelly beans. I don't eat them anymore, uh, but because, you know, weight. But, um, and black olives, we would sit down, open up a can of pitted black olives and eat the entire can, just the two of us. So, you know, it's a, from, from my youngest days, sodium and sugar and yeah, yeah, just, but, um, yeah, just having memories of my grandmother. Uh, she loved me more than anything. The first grandson in an Italian household can walk on water. Uh, which really pissed off my cousin Susan, of course. <laughs> but my grandmother, my grandmother did love me more than anybody else. I was her favorite for a few reasons. But um, we were thick as thieves, and uh, it broke her heart. I, I broke her heart um, over and over and over again uh, as a, a teenager dipping into um, alcoholism and drug addiction. And then in my early 20s, really, really, really hitting bottom. I hit, how's this for a story time, right? Hey, happy, happy St. Patrick's. I hit bottom for me in my alcoholism in my early 20s. And I stayed there until I got sober. It got worse and worse and worse. But in my early 20s, just as my grandmother was, was getting ill and would soon pass, I was um, really in the throes of deep alcoholism and um, I was dying honestly and um, it broke my grandmother's heart I can't I can't tell you how much it hurt her and how much I cared how much I cared but how much I couldn't change my behavior um, but I did get sober as you all know because I keep telling you in 2002 she passed in 2004 so As much as I broke her heart over and over and over again, as your children will do, she got to see me not only get sober, but begin to thrive uh, and to begin to be the person that she always really, really wanted me to be. Um, she just always, she knew what my childhood was like and she just wanted me to feel safe and loved. That's all she wanted. She didn't need care if I was financially successful or blah, blah, blah. She just wanted me to be safe and to be loved. And I found those things in my first months and particularly my first two years of uh, sobriety. And it brought her absolutely nothing but joy. Um, her, She gave me a gift, and I don't think it works anymore. I'm going to start to cry. She gave me a gift uh, on my second anniversary, which was a, uh, a mini tape recorder. Oh, all of my moisturizer is going right into my eyes, which is not pleasant. Um, she gave me a little mini, little mini handheld tape recorder. And inside was a cassette where she had uh, recorded herself speaking for about 45 minutes about some of our family history, her parents, um, her, my grandfather's parents and uh, how much my grandmother's uh, mother loved my grandfather. My grandfather could do no wrong. She hated my grandmother. She, she hated my, her own daughter hated her. But she, oh, she loved my, the only thing my grandmother did right was get married to my grandfather. Uh, but um, 
that was a gift that she gave me at uh, two years was a gift of some of our family history but I am getting all sorts of emotional I need to stop because it's honestly not safe for me to drive and talk and cry at the same time so I'm gonna see you guys later let's just appreciate how cute I am okay and then uh, <laughs> I'll see you guys soon Oh, look, my camera just keeps filming me out of the blue. There they are. Wave. Say hi to your friends. <laughs> hi. Look at this. All right, I'm trying not to judge myself, but I'm going to okay. make a big dent in Mine the salad. Good. Yeah. God, that was so much fun. I love these girls, Heidi and Linda. Um, Heidi got me a birthday present. I don't know what it is. It's got some heft. I'm going to hold on to it until my birthday and I'll open it then. Uh, but we really had a great time there. The wait staff was fantastic. And uh, I had, uh, I didn't show you my dinner. I just showed you the salad, I think. I had a salad and then I had uh, chicken parm. Thankfully it wasn't a huge, huge serving. There were two small chicken breasts with some pasta. So the menu said it was 10, uh, it was a thousand calories, 1,000 20 calories so not so much but I did eat it all so that was my meal for the day I will have a snack at some point later on today and definitely want to try and hit the gym oh bye girls wait <laughs> goodbye isn't she cute is isn't it no it's already full it. of, it's already full of goodwill it's but got a, it's got a good trunk it, I love well so do I right, we'll bye love you they're so great they're so great oh, I love them so much it is bright so after lunch of course I had to go good willing because I had to and I got some great stuff let me show you got a pair of dig out of this plastic hold on Olukai I really don't know the brand very well but uh, it's just a very casual little loafer. Apparently the back of the shoe is designed to collapse if you want to really be lazy and not actually even bother putting the shoe all the way on your foot. But as you can see, they are brand new. And of course my size, $15. Thank you very much. These sell for $100 right now online. Very happy. Now I undid the buckle on this one, but this is a pair of Monk Strap shoes by Cole Haan. And as you can see, they're in flawless shape. They've been worn a few times, uh, but they are a beautiful pair of Cole Haan uh, shoes. I love a monk strap. Probably at its height, it was probably the most fashionable in the late 90s, early 2000s. But I really think it's a smart looking shoe. And these were $15 for the pair. Thank you very much, Cole Haan, $15, very happy. What else did I get? Oh, this is just a, a little Ralph Lauren polo necktie that I, it was $2, so I'll, I'll resell that. And this is my happiest find. This is, does anyone recognize this black and green? Yes, that would be Hugo Boss. Thank you very much. It's hard to see in this state, but it is a, um, I wouldn't say a track suit, or just a leisure suit, but it's a two-piece black a uh, little set by Hugo Boss. And it fits me beautifully. In fact, I have a pair of black suede uh, hush puppy loafers that would be beautiful with this little tracksuit. Oh my God, the sun. Uh, I'm probably not gonna wear it with sneakers. So I'll have it look more like I'm just out for lunch, you know, to grab a drink on the way, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But um, it's a beautiful, beautiful leisure suit, what we would call it back in the 70s and 80s. But Hugo Boss, $30. Very, very happy with that. Uh, so I am now probably going to go home, uh, give the cats their afternoon treats, maybe take a little nap. I don't know. It is uh, probably about three o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. Last day of reserve. Um, and then, well, maybe I'll sit down at the computer and see if there's anything I can figure out to do for uh, something this week of my birthday. All right, I will see you guys later. I went to another Goodwill. I could be doing heroin, but no, I'm going to Goodwill. I could be spending money in worse ways. Um, I forget how much I spent on that last trip. It wasn't a lot. I just spent $25 at the one on uh, Fort Apache and Flamingo. What did I get for $25? Let me show you. I got this Hawaiian shirt, which I know looks kind of crazy, 
But on, it looked absolutely amazing. And it looked like, oh, it looked like money is what it looked like. I don't recognize the brand, but um, this looked unbelievable on me. So, I mean, just to, you know, not to be modest or anything, but it looked fantastic. I got this pair of what I think are probably golf shorts. They're by uh, All in Motion, uh, which I think you can get at Target or Walmart or something. But they're really, really nice. And I love the green. I think this would be a great pop of color. Who knows? That might be kind of fun with with that, right? Uh, I got this pair of um, linen shorts. They are Tommy Bahama. That's the logo for Tommy Bahama. They are reversible. This is the out inside of those shorts, and that would be the uh, the other side. So you can reverse their reversible shorts. Who ever heard of such a thing? By Tommy Bahama, uh, and these were seven dollars. Thank you so much. It's a size thirty eight, but I tried them on and they fit. They're a little roomy, but um, uh, with a belt they'll be fine. And then I bought these, uh, which are technically swim shorts. Uh, but I, I would wear these to like an amusement park or something. And they are by Vineyard Vines. And I spent, yeah, $6 on those. So, yay. One day I'm going to give you guys a tour of my thrifted wardrobe. Uh, like I was, I may have been saying earlier, um, I used to dress beautifully. I used to dress really well. Then I just, it just, it fell off the radar. I didn't need to. And then when I became a flight attendant, oh my gosh, when I lived in Florida, I mean, who needed to even wear clothes? If you wore a t-shirt and a pair of shorts, flip-flops, you were fine, which is kind of the same in Las Vegas. Like no one really dresses here in Las Vegas. I feel sort of fancy when I'm wearing a button down here. Uh, but um, my wardrobe used to be amazing, but I was making a lot of money. Uh, and I bought my clothes at Neiman's and Saks and places like that. Now my wardrobe obviously is 100% Goodwill, but it's I think it's better than what I used to wear uh, back in the day when I actually had a lot more money. So one day I'll give you guys a tour of my thrifted wardrobe. I think it'd be kind of interesting um, for the thrifting community, but especially for maybe for guys who like clothes. I don't know. All right. I'm going to see you guys soon. I might hit one more Goodwill on the way home. I might. And evening has fallen and I have gone to another Goodwill. I bought more clothes mostly because I have always enjoyed clothing and my new body as it's changing, I really enjoy clothes all the more. And when I can find gorgeous clothes for almost nothing that are practically unworn, why wouldn't I, right? So whoever died and left their shorts to me, thank you very much. I appreciate it. But these are a little less blue than they look on camera and they're more of a seafoam teal kind of number. Um, really, really, really pretty. Um, these are just exactly as pink as they look. Uh, Vineyard Vines, really, really nice. And um, they're a size 38, but they were very small for a 38 and they were $7. So um, just fantastic. These will be a lot of fun to wear with something this summer. These are a pair of um, sort of lilac colored shorts by Tommy Bahama. And uh, these would go beautifully with what I'm wearing today. Like I might wear this outfit again, but with these lilac shorts and I bought a pair of just navy shorts and these are very short it's like a six inch inseam so those are very nice really really nice cotton more Tommy Bahama as you can see by the logo so I just walked in there I was in there for like eight minutes enough time to be cruised quite heavily by this young kid it was very funny uh, he certainly has daddy issues because he was, he was looking me up and down the entire time. He's actually coming this way. So I think we're all going to leave because that would be very uncomfortable for me. <laughs> He's very, very young. Uh, so I'm going to go now. <laughs> and there he is. <laughs> He's a little cutie pie, but uh, he, he can't be. 28 years old. He may be 30. Oh, he's parked right next to me. Uh, and he's a little teeny uh, peanut too, which is kind of how I like my guys. 
blah 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 blah. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta stop. I'm actually being. I'm actually flushed right now. Oh, he drives a very nice Lexus. Maybe I should have. I should rethink my position on younger men. Good morning, buddy. Good morning. Good morning, Eleanor. Good morning. I see your tail moving. Oh, well, you're awake. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Are you taking a little sleep? Are you going to sleep? Yeah. Are you sleeping? Were you sleeping? Did I wake you up? You always wake me up. Hello? Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eleanor has had a long day of relaxing, so she's taking a nap. <laughs> My handsome boy. Hello. Good boy. Hey guys, how are you? Good evening. It's the next day. I know the day just got away from me. Um, last night I just kind of fussed around online. Didn't really do much. Um, I did a little research in terms of like a hotel room I might like to stay in in Provincetown because I was really on the edge of booking a ticket and heading out to Provincetown for a couple of days. Uh, and uh, I have been having a very difficult time booking a flight on my ID90, which is uh, really where we would book most of our non-rev flights. I can go to ID90, but they only have a couple different airlines, but blah, blah, blah. Um, the uh, website will not let me book a ticket for as a commuting flight attendant. That's how we would get around not paying for a ticket. And it's common. Everyone does it. It only lets me list as a leisure passenger and it charges me for my ticket. Now, one of the benefits of being a flight attendant is not having to pay for a flight uh, domestically, at least for me. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it was going to charge me for my ticket. Not a lot, like 50 something dollars. Um, and uh, then I'm looking at the flight I'd have to fly because I'm not doing anything for my vacation. This is what I'm, yeah, I'm getting to. Um, flying to New England, up to Boston, for example, um, with the time zone change would take the better part of a day. And then driving for like two and a half, three hours up to the Cape, uh, it just sounds like a lot to get to Cape Cod in March. March is not the most beautiful time to, to visit the Cape. It's nice. It's not snowing, but it's cold and kind of gross and miserable. So I'm not quite sure why I had such a wild hair up my butt to get to Provincetown or even Boston. The weather in Boston's horrible this time of year. So I decided not to fly uh, east. Then I'm trying to think, well, what is there on the West Coast I want to do? I really can't think of anything. I really, I really don't have a desire to see much. Like I'm in LA once in a while. There's really nothing in LA I'm desperate to see. One day I'd like to see the uh, the Hollywood sign, but I'm not even really hyped to see that. Um, Seattle, Portland. I've been there a few times. I wouldn't mind going to the Japanese gardens in Portland, things like that. But those are things I can do on layovers. Um, so there really isn't a lot for me to do. I'm just, I just don't, <laughs> I know I've got the whole country at my disposal and it's really nothing I want to do. So I think I'm just going to relax. I had budgeted at home. I had budgeted between 700 and a thousand dollars for a vacation, like to go somewhere, um, you know, for a hotel room and car rental and and food and all that stuff uh but i really don't know if i want to spend seven hundred dollars or more for a few days somewhere that i'm uh, that i really i'm not desperate to go to so what i think i'm going to do is just what i usually do is relax and take my time off and enjoy my time off 
with my cats. I don't have to worry about them, you know. Um, maybe hit a movie, maybe do something here in Las Vegas that I, I wouldn't normally do. So I'm just going to kind of hang out, I think, and enjoy my time. So I've got the next week off for vacation. Then the following week is a reserve week. But the odds of them calling me again are very slim. And if they do, they do. Whatever. Uh, I make more money because I'll be getting per diem, you know. So, yeah. That's my that's my plan. Or I should say not my plan uh, to do anything. And I don't feel bad about it. I don't feel like I'm losing out. Um, next month, I have 10 days off in a row. So, if I really regret not going anywhere... I can do something next month in April when the weather's probably a little bit better uh, elsewhere in the country. Uh, the only time I really enjoy New England, there's only two months, June and September. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, so I wanted to just kind of update you on that and let you know what my plans are. My birthday, I really don't even know what I'm going to do on my birthday. I don't have any friends here. Uh, in uh, Las Vegas that would do anything with me. I just don't. Um, I'm not sure what that says about me, that I just enjoy my time alone or that no one really wants to be friends with me, <laughs> except for you guys. Uh, but yeah, so I'll, I, again, I'll probably spend my, my birthday alone. Maybe I'll take myself out to dinner. I don't know. I'll go to o Outback if I can find one. I got a gift card from Deb. So, blah, blah, blah. I just wanted to fill you in what's going on. Um, I'm just taking a little drive around Vegas. I'm going to end up uh, at the gym in a few minutes and uh, do a little workout. And there we go. All right. So, um, I will see you guys in the next video. I'm not quite sure what that's going to be. But we'll find out together. All right. See you soon. Bye. Fly safe.